Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm cousin Sabrina Sojourner. And for the next little bit, we're going to be discussing Tisha B'Av in the time of COVID and our current situation. A few years ago, I explored Echa Lamentations with a class. Periodically over the weeks that we were together, someone would read or hear something distressing and they or another would say, this text is not Jewish. I always had to smile. I tried not to laugh. Echa is a beautiful and very difficult text. And that's what makes it especially Jewish. Though attributed to Jeremiah, Echa was not written by Jeremiah. Jeremiah writing is more flowing, whereas Echa has a structure that is poetic and highly organized. There are sections that use acrostics that are repeated and to convey lamentations in different voices that sometimes interrupt one another. It's a formal mourning that exudes a lot of feelings and it takes a hard look at the aftermath of war and narrates individual experiences alongside. Placing the man who has seen affliction alongside the mother listening to her child dying. We are called to witness the death of the city, the destruction of our temple, and the dreams of a future that were trampled. God is not absent from the text. God is the text. God mourns the destruction, offers forgiveness, and promises redemption. Echa offers us the story of a God that is with us, especially in the darkest times. A God that will renew our days. These tidbits and much more speak to our current time. We are in a time of upheaval. It's okay if you laugh at that. Most to all of us have and are experiencing disruption. A disruption that has lasted longer than we thought it would. Six months ago, though after six months after the first diagnosed cases, we are reluct reluctant. Six months after the first diagnosed cases, we are reluctantly accepting that nothing will change anytime soon. So we enter this season of communal mourning with an enhanced sense of personal mourning. We mourn all we have lost over these last few months. From something as simple and meaningful as handshakes and hugs to something as meaningful and difficult as caring for and burying our loved ones. We have lost the routines that marked our days, our weeks, our months, allowing us to distinguish one from another. Some of us have lost contact with our families and find ourselves especially missing our grandchildren. And some of us are lucky enough to be missing great grandchildren that make us feel so loved and give us the best hugs and remind us that there is a future. We have lost contact with our friends social workers, neighbors, game mates, doctors, nurses, and therapists. People we nod or wave to on our walks, our bike trips, the coffee shop, or the small store or restaurants that were part of our routines. And the people in them that regularly said hello, greeted us with a smile, and had our order waiting for us by the time we got to the counter. We miss communal meals. Kiddish club fair and oneg spreads, spontaneous invitations to lunch, dinner, breakfast, coffee, a drink, a, shop, a Shabbat or holiday meal. Shabbat is now online, so we're using electronics, and some of us find it hard to manage or navigate all the different platforms. Something many of us are, and some, 
And Shabbat is now online on platforms that some of us find hard to manage or navigate or on television, something many of us are quite accustomed to not watching on Shabbat. Learning opportunities such as this one are also now available and online, and it's not the same for you or for me. What's missing is the interactions that enhance learning, including spirited discussion, unexpected vulnerability, and of course, laughter. Still, giving the choice of being completely isolated with no access to Shabbat, or learning, or teaching, or sharing, I accept all the emotional hurdles I successfully jumped with my skinned uh, and bruised shins to arrive at this moment. If our social structures have been strained, our understanding of our social contracts have been blown apart with enough pain, rage, and anger to open millions of eyes and minds that previously were closed. Echa makes clear that the destruction of the temple was caused by our human failings, and the Talmud specifically names baseless hatred. The United States and the rest of the world is now having to, to the United States and the rest of the world is now having a conversation about baseless hatred. While the problem of racism is not new, until recently, the multiple ways in which people of color are over policed or vilified by white people were largely invisible to non-people of color. Most stories never made national news and few were covered locally. Often when something happened and was witnessed by a white friend or partner or colleague, we were encouraged to forget about it, let it slide just this once, or the behavior was excused or rationalized. Before George Floyd's murder, there was COVID-19. The first cases were diagnosed in the state of Washington just a little more than six months ago. Initially, the stories were about people who had been on cruises or had traveled to China or other places where the virus was active. As the first, as the first deaths were reported, there was no racial big. As the first deaths were reported, there was no racial breakdown. Something unusual in our race-obsessed country. When race was included, the differences were stunning. Black and brown people were dying of COVID-19 at rates much higher than their percentage of the population in the cities, towns, and counties in which we live. I was among those who understood Surgeon General Jerome Adams imploring African Americans and Latinos to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of our families. However, it was confusing to have him add drugs and alcohol to the things we, Adams is also African American, need to avoid when the opioid addiction problem continues to grow within white communities. Shouldn't white people also be encouraged to stay away from drugs? It took others to point out the problematic relationship between American medicine and people of color. Experimentation on our bodies without being conform informed of what was going on and therefore they didn't have consent to do what they were doing. The Tuskegee experiments in Henrietta Lacks are just two of multiple examples. Add to that underinvestment in healthcare for poor people and the failure to recognize the stress of racism and the failure to recognize that the stress of racism is the number one cause for high blood pressure of, for African Americans and Latinos. These are just a few of the causes for bad health outcomes for It took others to point out the problematic relationship between American medicine and people of color. Experimentation without our consent and not being informed of what was done to our bodies. The Tuskegee experiments and Henrietta Lacks are just two of multiple examples. 
the underinvestment in health care for poor people, and the failure to recognize that the stress of racism is the number one cause for high blood pressure for blacks and for African the number one cause for high blood pressure for I should back, back up a little bit more to give you a little bit more room. I'm sorry. Underinvestment in health care for poor people and the failure to recognize that the stress of racism is the number one cause for high blood pressure, to name a few of the causes for bad health care outcomes and for the mistrust of American medicine in communities of color. Add to that the deliberate cutting up of our neighborhoods with highways and main roads, the failure of local governments to incentivize investments in black and brown neighborhoods with grocery and drug stores or shopping strips offering other services, even the neighborhoods that are even the neighborhoods that are economically able to support even when the neighborhoods are economically able to support such development. The cell phone footage of Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin kneeling on the neck of George Floyd for eight minutes and 46 seconds as he said he couldn't breathe, as he said he couldn't breathe and cried out for his mother, pushed thousands of people to say enough. I never looked at the footage. Yet I came across a photo. Chauvin was relaxed. His hands were in his pocket. He didn't care what happened to George Floyd. It was as if Chauvin assumed that there was no consequence for him. It's been reported that the officers who were with him asked him to stop and voiced concern and were ignored. Bystanders, including the person behind the cell phone footage, also tried to intervene and were ignored. An ambulance took George Floyd to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. It has been heartening to see so many people from so many different backgrounds in the streets and peacefully protesting against police brutality and supporting the concept that black lives matter. And the overwhelming majority of demonstrations have been peaceful. Those, though emancipated over 150 years ago, we have never been fully treated as equal citizens in this country that we help to create and to build. Black Lives Matter as a social justice stance means that structural racism, the foundation of white supremacy, must be deconstructed and removed from all of our legal, economic, and social structures, including education at every level. We must combat the built-in racist assumptions that create low expectations of black and brown children and young and older adults, including the racist assumptions that cause us to be punished harsher than white children or adults for the same behaviors. The elimination of structural racism is of great importance to white-skinned and white-identified Jews because the same tenets that support structural racism also support and promote anti-Semitism. The route to ending anti-Semitism is the road to ending anti-Black racism. In working with others to transform our society to be truly equitable and fair, we are affirming two tenets the eternal hold dear, Betselem Elohim. We each, we each are made in the divine image. And ki, and ki li kol ha'aretz, all the earth is God's.
I provide this modest litany of personal, communal, social, and global anguish. Because part of the service for Echa lamentation implores us to remember. The solemn gathering is about recounting all the events that happened on or within the weeks preceding Tisha B'Av, as well as to read the scroll. According to the Baal Shem Tov, remembrance leads to redemption. And so we plead, eternal one, may our remembrance of Jerusalem lead to redemption so that out of Zion, the law may, the law may again come forth and out of Jerusalem, the word of God. May your love, dear God, embrace the world and turn us toward remembrance. May your will toward redemption not be forsworn. Turn us toward remembrance. Return us, O oh God, to you, and we will return. Renew our days as of old. Hashivenu, Hashivenu, Adonai Elecha, Vena Shuva, Vena Shuva. Hashivenu Adonai Lecha Vena Shuva Vena Shuva Chodesh Chodesh Yameinu And seeking a modicum of redemption, we remember and recount these events that are said to have occurred on Tisha B'Av. It was decreed that the enslaved. It was decreed that in. It was decreed that the enslaved generations of the wilderness would not enter the land. The temple of Solomon was put to the torch. The words of Jeremiah came to pass. Zion will be plowed as a field. The second temple was destroyed and the temple mount was plowed. The shining jewelry of a golden Spain was expelled into further exile and the divine unity was further separated. On the ninth of Av, the kindle was fired. On the... <laughs> On the ninth of Av, the fire was kindled. On the tenth of Av, the fire destroyed. On the ninth of Av, the First World War began the great burning was still to come. On Tisha B'Av, we are also called to remember that we are among those who have seen desolation. The crafted stones shattered to rubble, the holy places filled with waste and entrails, sacred vessels debased, 
the love labor of artisans endowed by heaven melted down for the wages of the courtesan. The ravaged virgins, the battered babies, the savaged elders, the temple as a den of jackals and thieves. And the shackled princes of Judah, endlessly trudging the blazing plains of Babylon, bearing in sacks sewn from Torah scroll strips, a burden of rock and rubble. Anaharod Babel Yasha Alhana Alnaharod Babel Sham Yasham Nu Gambahinu Vezochrenu at Zion, Shirulanu Mishir Shion, Eknashir at Shir Adunai, Eknashir at Al Naharod Bavel Sham Yashav Du Gambachinu Betzochrenu at Zion Shirulanu Mishir Zion Eknashir at Shir Adonai Ek nashir et shir Adonai Admad necha Shiru lanu meshir tzion Ek nashir et shir Adonai Ek nashir et shir Adonai Admad necha By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, also we wept when we remembered Zion. Don't you know they carry us away to captivity and required of us a song? How can we sing Hashem's song in a strange land? Shiru lanu mishir tion, ek nashir et shir Adonai, ek nashir et shir Adonai, admat necha. While we are not in a foreign land, we are in a strange time. We need to grieve what we used to take for granted. We need to grieve what used to help us feel secure. We need to grieve the loved ones near and far who are no longer with us on this plane and the pain we feel for not being able to properly bury them or receive close comfort in our grief. All the brokenness we need to own, mourn, and release until the ache is no longer overwhelming. We cannot forget because we need to tell our stories for ourselves and others now and for the future. Though the prophets admonish us, they also bring us tidings of joy and the promise of hope. These are the words of Isaiah from chapter 65, verses 17 to 24, as translated by Rabbi Rami Shapiro. 
He translates yud he vav he, the one who is. The one who is says, behold, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. Rejoice and be happy forever in what I am creating, for I shall create Jerusalem as joy and her people as a delight. Even before you pray, I will answer. Even before you ask, I will respond. It is through the litany of remembrance that we hold the brokenness and renew the dream of harmony. In holding this paradox, we heed the words of Isaiah, seeing what was there before with new eyes, as if we were seeing it for the first time. We notice what is so and give ourselves the opportunity to be curious, to explore, to embrace this newness with wonder. Curiosity, exploration, and wonder are seeds that cause us to begin to dream about what is and who we need to be to live in what is so and imagine what could be. This strengthens our desire to stay present and explore what is possible. With renewed vision and vigor, we mend the broken sphere of trust in life. Renewing our trust in life feeds hope and recenters among us a dwelling place for God. From this place of trust and hope and connection to the eternal, we close our reading with a new request of the divine. Guard me, O God, from hating people. Since we are all your creations, they are my brothers and my sisters. Guard me from recalling what was done to me in my youth, my young adulthood, my middle passages, yesterday. Even when all the stars in my sky are quenched, even when my soul's voice grows mute, even when I am overcome by disaster, aid me so that I do not lay bare his or her guilt. Some hold a piece of me too scary to share. In each, I am reflected like a wayfarer from the planets. In each, I behold another refraction of your face. Guard me, O oh God, from hating people. Since we are all your creations, they are my brothers and my sisters. You are my sisters and my brothers. The only question left is, how will we know when it is safe to come out and be with our families, neighbors, the world, to be in person with our sacred communities? Baba Kama 60B9 says, the, sages, the sages taught if there is a plague in the city, a person should not enter the synagogue alone as the angel of death leaves his utensils there. And for this reason, it is a dangerous place. And this matter, the danger in the synagogue applies only, applies only when there are no children learning in the synagogue and there are not 10 people praying in it. But, if there are children learning and at least 10 people praying there, it is not a dangerous place. Ken Yehi Ratzon, may we again know the comfort of our spiritual homes and spaces and the closeness with people we love and appreciate in our time. Ashivenu. Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesha Menu Kechedam Ki Imaas Meastanu Katsafta Alenu Admeod Ashivenu 
Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem Ashivenu Adonai Elecha Venashuva Chadesh Yameinu Kekedem Ki Ima os ma astanu, katsafta aleinu, ad meod. Ashivenu, adonai elecha, venashuva, hadesh yameinu.